Boone. Uh, we're joined by him, host of the Brett Boone Podcast, an Odyssey original featuring the most notable names in Major League Baseball and, and all around sports every single week. We've got to know Booty here this baseball season. We love Boone. I don't know if we have enough time for Boone because he's still jacked up. But Brett, good morning, man. Welcome back to the Morning Rose here on 95.70 game. Joe Shasky, the Butcher, Bonte Hill. And we got a dose of Shohei yesterday. We got a dose of Shohei the last three games. And I, I just... Man, he's unbelievable. But let me start here. If you had one sports wish, Brett, one sports wish, could be anything. could be you managing a big league club. It could be you hitting 700 home runs. What would that sports wish be for you, Brett? One sports wish. Sports wish. We, so I'm, I'm you wish so for I can just anything, anything you want. that can happen. Anything that can happen. A hundred game MLB season. You Bonds could, could go in the hall. Right. Your favorite football team could get Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Babe Ruth the Stadium. Uh, Babe Ruth has come out from yep. underground like the Undertaker and yes. appear at a baseball Ooh. game at Yankee Stadium. I kind of like that one. I got you. I got. I, I got what you're saying. Yeah. I, I, that's a weird. That's a weird. And I don't know. I've never been put in that situation. <laughs> what would the sports wish be? I'll tell you. I would say I'd appear. Well, I go back. So you put me back in my playing days just for a day. I love it. I play with. Oh, this is this going to be too sappy? I'd play with my dad and my grandfather, and we'd all be uh, we'd all be present. That's that cool. Sense? We'd hey, all be in our prime. Cool. Brett, that's cool right game. there. Yeah, Brett, that's I can feel that. We have a team, and I'm not trying to like pretend that I'm anywhere near the Boone family, but what, my uncle played second. I played short. Pops at pitcher. My my cousin at first. My brother in the outfield. There's nothing better than playing with your family. I'm 100% with you on that. No, it's cool. And I got a, I got a chance to play with Aaron for a season in, in Cincinnati in 98. I, I think, though, when you're going through it, when you're in that moment, uh, you don't appreciate it, you know? Mm. It's kind of like, well, it's cool, Aaron. You're here. Welcome <laughs> to the big leagues. But you give me a good feed at second base. Now you're my third base and you have nothing to do <laughs> other than that. Give me a good feed at second. Just give me the ball and I'll do the rest. That was my attitude. And once in a while on an off day, we'd go have dinner together. But I don't think you, you appreciate it until it's over with. Does that make sense? And totally, you know, no doubt. You know, it's pretty cool getting to play at the big league level with your brother. Because we're four years apart, so we always missed each other. You know, Little League, yeah. he was too young. Uh, high school, we missed each other. Huh. College, I went to USC. I left USC. He went to USC. So the first time we actually played together was the big leagues. And that was that was very cool. But I think, yeah, you always appreciate it more after the fact. Well, what would you think of him and his tirade the other day? Because uh, it felt very theatrical, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think at this point, it's it, people ask, you know, people say, Hey, Aaron did this again. I'll say, you know, that's just what he, my, my, st my stock answer now is that's what he does. Um, <laughs> but I watched it the other night and I, I couldn't, I was physically laughing and it took me back to a time in our childhood. That's what, that's what Aaron is truly like. He is, he's so passionate about this game and about his beliefs and his feelings and his players in that club. This None of this is premeditated. I mean, Aaron, everybody sees Aaron's antics, and I tease him when I talk to him. I said, you're going to get thrown out again? Come on, keep it together, kid. And I tease him about that. But it's so funny. He goes out. I know exactly what's going through his mind because I remember as a little kid, I used to let him tag around with me, the older kids, and he would argue like that with me about a, a touch football game on the street. If he didn't think it was a first down, he would argue to the death with me exactly how he was arguing with Laz. So I'm, I'm watching him argue. I'm watching him do the imitation behind home plate. And it's taken me back to my childhood. I'm like, that's exactly what Aaron is like. He <laughs> really believes this. He doesn't go out there with, with any uh, expectations. He, he just wants to go talk to Laz. He, he first is thinking, okay, I like Laz as a person. I don't want to hurt his feelings. I don't want to say anything that I regret. I don't want to make him look bad. And then he gets into the moment and he does all that stuff. And, and he kind of loses, he, he, he kind of loses where he is in reality because, because of the passion that he has for this. And I talked to him after the incident. I said, Hey, that was quite a, quite a show you put on buddy. I said, that was pretty good. <laughs> and he just kind of laughing and he's like, Oh, Brad, he said, you know, it just, man, there were a lot of bad calls there today. I said, I get it. I get it. But, uh, that, that's what it is for me at this point. It's, 
it just that's Aaron, and he wears his heart on his sleeve, and, and he means nothing but but good for everybody. I mean, this is a guy that that <laughs> he really does want good for everybody. He's a man of faith. I mean, he's deeply uh, he cares about people. <laughs> he just when he loses it, he loses it, and it's great. And we're completely different people when it comes to that personality. wise when I lose it. You're going to know I lost it. Aaron's calculated and is like, oh, I want to lose it, but I want to lose it respectfully. Oh, and then boy. it gets out of hand, and I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I enjoy watching it. <laughs> my favorite, hey, hey, Brett, my favorite ejection was when he got ejected last year at St. Louis. And actually, he scored a run. He, you can hear him on a hot bike <laughs> call a freaking strike. <laughs> and he just gets Tom like, man, this guy's a hoop. But hey, look, I'd be frustrated too right now. The Yankees just three games over 500, struggling right now with injuries, pitching, you name it, man. It's been it's been a grind for them. But I want I want to speak on something. We're talking to Brett Boo, former major leaguer, all star, of course, here on the Morning Rose. Check out the Brett Boo podcast here on Odyssey. Um, you had David Ortiz on. And you brought up yeah. Barry Bonds with David Ortiz. And I was very stunned to hear what David Ortiz said about Barry Bonds in terms of just you couldn't create anybody like him. There's nobody like him. What did you take from that when David Ortiz said that about Barry Bonds? It didn't shock me because I, I know the culture and I know that time in baseball history. And, and when people ask him about me today, it, it could be my kids as an example. Uh, I, I try to tell them about Barry Bonds. Like he's a... Like he's a folklore, and I said you don't understand how much better he was than the rest of us. And oh, he couldn't have been that much better, you know. The kids. What about Trout? What about Joe? Okay, no, this these are great, great players. I'm and I played with and against great, great players, um, but there's nobody like him. He was that separate, and the feeling is is across the board. I think if you took a a poll from 1985. Uh, to 2005, and and you pulled everybody that played in that generation, and asked them. I think you're going to have a similar to answer, similar answer to what you heard from Ortiz. And, and the thing that really solidifies it for me is, yeah, I I hit some home runs in my day. I didn't hit 500 home runs. I hit 250 home runs. Da- uh, David Ortiz, the 500 home run guy, and that's how he put it. He said, Brett, he goes. You're hearing this from a guy sitting here that just hit 547 home runs in the big leagues, or whatever his number was. And he said, "And I'm telling you, <laughs> there." Essentially, he was saying, "And I'm not even close to Barry Bonds. I'm not even close." And yeah. David Ortiz, I'm telling you, that he was a beast. Yeah, that guy was. That, that was a bad man right there. Yeah, and for him to even say it's not even close to what Bonds was doing, I think really kind of puts it in perspective. For the people that maybe that didn't get to see Bonds pay, play up close, yeah. or really, or didn't pay as attention as much as you'd like, he was that good. Yeah, I agree with you, and and I think we were very lucky, uh, Bonte and I. We watched just about every at bat of Barry's career. Television had had made it to where you could actually watch every single game, and we saw it from the beginning till the very end. And it was must watch television. I'm watching Shohei Otani just for three games here against the Giants. Now he pitched last night, but the night before that, I came in here. You know, I go, I can't believe it. The guy hits a chopper up the middle, and he is sprinting like it's Game Seven uh, of of the NLCS. Uh, you know, trying to get down the line, and then I know he's pitching the next day. I'm so impressed with just this guy's work ethic and how hard he plays and everything. And I'm saying, God, I watched him for three games. I would love, I would die to watch him 162 or however many he's playing right now. Like, he impresses me. What impresses you about Shohei? Shohei's up to, I mean, Bonds, you're talking a different, that's completely different. It's an offensive category. It's, Bonds didn't pitch as well. But, but offensively still, Bonds is unmatched. Yes. What Shohei's doing, and, and, and I didn't think we'd ever see this in, in our lifetime, it, n- let alone, I thought maybe one day, because they were starting to do it in college where guys would, you know, they'd be clo- a closer in college and an offensive player. And I thought, okay, at the college level, that's fine. Maybe it, professionally one day as life goes on, you're going to see uh, a guy maybe could sneak out into the bullpen for an inning or two and be a, be a decent player. Then, then Shohei come on the scene. I said, "Well, if he, I'll tell you, if he's just an average six or seven hole hitter, you know, is a decent player, and and he can be a fourth or fifth starter. That would be unbelievable, and it would be that if you could play it at a, at a decent level on both sides of the ball. But the fact that he's doing it at an all star level on both sides, 
it, it's so remarkable. And the thing I love about it is he's really embraced it. I think he's a very humble man. He's a very likable man. But I think he understands what he's doing at this stage. He understands that what he's doing is is off the charts remarkable and, and that special. And I think he has an awareness of that. And he doesn't walk around. It's not from it from an ego standpoint. It's from a I appreciate what I'm what I'm able to do. I I don't even know how I'm doing it. Right. You can see it when he hits a double. He hits the second base, and you know you have that exchange between the second baseman and the, and the and the runner or the shortstop and the runner. And he just has that look on his face, like, yeah, I can't believe I'm doing this either. <laughs> but it's pretty. But it, but it's pretty cool, and I'm going to continue to enjoy this. This offseason is going to be remarkable. The, the, the money that is put uh, towards Shohei to try to sign him. Uh, the only thing for me, and, and I pay I, myself in the, in the shoes of a franchise, of an owner, and it's almost like it's a scary situation. Like, I still, I watch this day in and day out. I've watched this for three years at, the, at an unbelievable level, a level I never thought I'd see. And a part of me thinks it's almost too good to be true. Like, how much longer can can a human being continue to 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 play at this level as a pitcher and as a hitter? So when this offseason, when I'm making my offer to him, is it like is it too good to be true? Is the best over with? And and now I'm not going to get you know return on my investment of six hundred million or whatever it's going to be. I don't know. As a fan of the game, I love it. I think it's unbelievable for the game. I want to I want him to play at a high level as long as as possible and, and and give this this world something we've never seen before at the same time i get a little nervous like how long how how, huh. how long can this last especially be an injury free the way he's the way he's been able to do that uh is is pretty pretty unbelievable brett boone here on the morning Ross on 95 70 game we'll get you out of here with this one we we're talking the first hour about the giants and look they're nine games over 500 and they they deserve credit. They've exceeded expectations this season so far. They can pitch. They can pitch. However, it's the way they pitch. With two starting pitchers and a bunch of openers in the bullpen. It didn't talk about offensively platooning. How would Brett Boone, as a free agent, view the Giants? Mm. Would you want to say, boy, they may pitch hit for me in a sixth inning. I'm going to play all nine, if not more. How would you view the Giants as a free agent? Because I'm finding it, we're both finding it a hard time to follow this team saying, boy, it's just, yeah, you're kind of winning some games here, but the way they're doing it, the style of baseball, I don't believe they could sustain this type of success playing this way. So how would you view the Giants as a free agent, Brett? I think, I, I think I'd look at where, where was I in my career? What's, what's the situation? Yeah. Uh, am I, a, am I a, a coveted free agent going into that? Because when you're in your heyday, they're not going to pitch it for you. It, it, for if if you're, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Depends on the level I'm playing at. Right. Where am no I at doubt. in my career? Say, let's say you put the, Let's say you're at the height of your powers, winning 116 games with the Seattle Mariners. And you looked at the Giants because I'm 37 my, homers hitting 330. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're probably not picking the Giants. You're probably getting paid by the so Dodgers I, I don't or something. Have to worry about that. That being said, <laughs> I, I, I understand the concept of what you're getting at. I don't know. San Fran for me, first of all, it's going to be off the off the table because I, I I hate playing there. Right center's too big. That's my that's going to be yeah. that's my uh, one of my strengths. That right center right. alley is like, oh man, that's going to cut down way on my production. Uh, but that's just the my first thought as a free agent. But I understand what you're saying. Right? Do I want to play that style of ball? Right. I'm probably going to look at the team, uh, see what they do this postseason because there's something magical about. San Francisco, what they did in fourteen and and sixteen, and was it fourteen and sixteen? Ten, ten, no, twelve and fourteen. Ten, twelve, yep. fourteen. There's something magical about that. It, it was a dynasty. There, there, there's something about it that that's attractive to to a free agent going to the Bay Area. Uh, I remember those years and and when they won and 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 how cool it was. So there is something attractive about that to a free agent. Hey. Come to this franchise. It's it's an iconic franchise. It's a dynasty. We've done it before. We'll do it again. So there is an attraction as a free agent. But I understand what you're saying. Right. Like, Brett, think about this, Brett. Think about this. Marco Luciano got called up in his first major league High baseball prospect. game. High prospect. Highly We've talented. been hearing about him for We're, five years. Yeah, it's been for, I've heard about this guy forever. I'm going to get old by the time he plays. But he comes up, and he gets pitch hit for after two at-bats. Jock. 
He's a platoon guy. Austin Slater, platoon guy. And he, we hear guys like Mania say, well, I don't know what my role is. I don't know if I'm a starter, bullpen guy, just a baseball player. Alex Wood is voiced frustration yes. about his role here. And look, it's helping them win games. There's no doubt about that. They get credit yes. for that. Nine games over 500, lead the wild card race. However, as a player, I think I, you hear the rumbling saying, "I don't, I don't know if I want to play here long term because of the role." Or what? Am I looking over my shoulder to get pitch hit for and say the fourth inning because the lefties on the mound and my left handed batter? I just don't. I don't. I don't know, Brett. I don't know about the style of play. Uh, no, no, I agree with you because from from my day, my day and age, that never happened. I think mm. we you look back a couple, just a couple of years ago into the postseason and how the Dodgers went about it. Do you remember that? Yeah. Bellinger yeah. won the it, NLCS and didn't play in the World Series the first two games. I couldn't believe it. And, and I'm kind of looking at it, and as a player, I'm going, are you kidding me? We get to the dan- final dance, we're, we're, we're behaving like this? Uh, this isn't going to work. It ended up not working, and it, right. they ended up not winning uh, the World Series. And then fast forward a year or two later, they stopped with all that platooning and doing all that stuff. So I don't know. Is that too much? I understand the data and the analytics. And as we move forward in life, yeah, it, it can do nothing but help you having as much intel as possible. But it gets to a point in sports where we overdo it. And it's like we overplay our hand. And it's so data and so so by the numbers driven that you take the human element out of it. And the human element and the heartbeat are a big part of what great players are. The, the great mm-hmm. players have the have the have the softest heartbeat. Yep. I love that sitting there and you and 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 you're, you're you're playing on numbers like everybody's the same. Everybody's not the same. When an umpire when a when a major league manager comes to the mound, take into consideration who's on the mound and what they're made of, and what they've done in their career, and who they are, and how they answer a question. That's whether you keep them in the game, not because the computer says that the third time through the lineup is not good for this situation. Well. Yeah, that that uh, that applies to the average player, but for this guy, it's different. And I think if you get away from from the gut reactions, the great managers today, we have all the they have all the data in the world at their fingertips. But the great managers still manage with their gut. Yes, yeah. and it's not. I don't care in this situation. It's a huge moment in the game in time. I don't care what the computer says. My gut says this, and I think the great managers still have that. So yes. As a player, I wouldn't like playing like that. I wouldn't like looking on my shoulder. Am I going to get pinch hit for today? Right. Bottom line is winning games, and however you do that, uh, you know, with certain rosters and certain talent levels, maybe that works. But when you get some real players in there that, that are star quality players, that, it, that, that'd be tough to, to play that role where it's a platoon here and we don't know what we're doing in the fourth inning. You mentioned Wood uh, on the pitching side and Manaya, they don't know their roles. Well, that starts at the top, and that starts with management uh, and down to the manager on the field. So, yeah, without being on the ground, being in that clubhouse, being a part of that, uh, the daily ongoing, uh-huh. I have no idea what it's like to play under Gabe Kaplan. Oh, man, great stuff, Brett. Great Thank answer, you, Brett. great stuff there, great perspective. Uh, we love talking to you. We'll do it again soon, my man. Make sure we check out the uh, Brett Boo podcast. Who you got coming up next? No, yeah, David Ortiz, man. They're getting all the big names. David Ortiz, we got uh, who we got? Apple Bonds coming up, ooh, ooh. and then we're going with uh, we got Dempster. Oh, Albert Pujols. I, oh. I got Albert Ooh. Pujols on Monday. So I mean, you're just flexing. About... All right, enough of you, Brett. You're flexing on. Have us. a good right, one, buddy. Thirty-seven <laughs> jacks. We got some good ones, boy. Good ones. <laughs> See you, buddy. Keep up the great work, Brett. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that was Brett Boone, host of the Brett Boone Podcast and Odyssey Original. Make sure to follow the Brett Boone Podcast on the Odyssey app or subscribe wherever you get your podcast.